Hey folks, Coach Patrick here from Marathon Nation back with another weekly coach video. Uh, something I like to do to sort of get out the message about how we train, how we work inside Marathon Nation. As always, you can learn more about Marathon Nation online at marathonnation.us. Uh, today's question comes from, from one of our members who, um, out in the audience, I should say, not a, not a full member, who um, recently had bariatric surgery and is to, up to competing for marathons now, which is awesome. Let's just take that into account. Very awesome. And the question is specifically, you know, what um, he can eat uh, so that he's not having to go to the bathroom so much. Um, and in some ways, you know, the question is, is not, um, not that much of an outlier, right? A lot of people have issues in terms of eating before a marathon and then also fueling within a marathon to take care of their bodies. Um, the first and foremost, most important part is to understand exactly what your body can take in over the course of a long run. And you can test that multiple times in your training. Um, in fact, every single long run, anything over an hour, I consider to be a long run. Uh, and every single long run is an opportunity for you to actually start you know, eating and drinking as you will on race day or as you plan to on race day uh, to train your body to, um, to take in both the fluid and the, and the calories, but also um, to get, give you a sense of how it works. Because you, know, you might have one great race where you ate some stuff and it worked out well, but then you try it again in six months or three months or whatever and it doesn't work. Different day, different conditions. Um, but trying every long run that's over an hour, trying to actually eat and drink as if you're thinking about your race, making sure that you never bonk, never want to bonk on a workout, um, will actually give you a chance to kind of put in perspective, okay, you know, maybe I like to drink, um, you know, six ounces of Gatorade, four ounces of water, and have a little bit of gel every hour, right? Make it up. Um, that works great for you in seven degrees when it's cool and shady outside, but on a day when it's 90 degrees, you need you know more water, less Gatorade, um, and maybe not so much gel. You can kind of figure out how you want to stack everything across your um, workouts, um, but ultimately you want to be able to make sure what you're taking in works well for you and that you're confident in that system. Now in terms of eating for a marathon, there's two things to think about. There's what you eat before, and then there's what you eat during. Um, what you eat before, typically, uh, the way we recommend folks think about it is you have a fantastically large lunch the day before. Uh, so you can eat, um, try and avoid a lot of roughage. You know, I myself will go uh, to like an Italian place where I'll get um, maybe a big appetizer and a meal as well. So um, I might get like a, a, a some kind of bruschetta appetizer, you know, uh, lots of good carbs there. Um, and then maybe some pasta or some chicken parmesan or something. Lots of good calories, a pretty big heavy meal. Eating it at lunchtime the day before gives me plenty of time to get that through my system. And also means that I'm going to avoid any sort of late night binging or any other uh, eating that I might do the night before the race when I'm kind of a little nervous. Uh, so dinner now, is, is priorities are off my dinner. I'm not so worried about eating a ton of food. I can eat whatever I want. And it's probably just a normal, regular, small size portion. Um, just something light, nothing too big. Um, again, I'm not thinking about carbo loading. I'm just thinking about getting some good nutrients in. Might not even finish my dinner. I will avoid roughage again. Um, no, no big salads, even though I'm a big salad fan. Um, uh, maybe a light dessert because you want to treat yourself, right? Or maybe a drink instead. Uh, and then, then you're off to bed. Then the morning of the race, you get up and you have a good breakfast. Um, you know, again, keep it simple. Uh, I myself use, I'll use like um, a bagel with um, some peanut butter, maybe a sliced up banana on top of it. That's a lot of good calories in there, and that's good for me. And I have that about an hour and a half before race day, maybe two hours. And the time leading up to race, I'm kind of sipping water, sipping sports gel. 15 minutes before, I'll take a gel and some sports and some uh, water. Uh, and then I'm off and running. Um, <clears throat> all that time, I'm processing food and fluids. Um, and as race day nerves go up, I'm obviously going to the bathroom a lot. Uh, but once you're out and moving, ideally, um, your output, you know, what, you, what you're taking in in terms of fluid and foods is being used by your body or being excreted as perspiration. And it's not really coming across... Um, as, uh, as something that you need to actually move uh, through your bowel. So if you've, if you've been able to stagger your food early enough in your day, you're not having to pass too much. And sometimes uh, coffee can even help you uh, take care of that uh, as part of your early morning ritual if, if you so desire and so need that. Um, but on race day, once you're going, you want to really kind of dial in. So if you know that you have digestive issues on race day, I suggest that you have that early breakfast, which I said was about two hours before for the normal person. You might want to have that you know, three or four hours before uh, and instead focus on um, supplementing um, across those four hours with a couple more gels that are small, easily processed, excuse me, and are not going to result in a bathroom trip for you, um, aside from just maybe uh, some urination. 
and then uh, use that to kind of keep the glycogen stores up and, and avoid any hunger so you start the race in a good place and once you get going you should be good uh, if you do need to stop on, on race day because of the bathroom do it uh, would rather have you do that than have you face any dire consequences um, and I certainly would want to have you avoid um, doing anything like taking um, any kind of uh, over-the-counter medication or, or item to uh, prevent you from going to the bathroom, uh, which can lead to uh, dehydration, other complications, um, or to force you to go to the bathroom before the race as well. Uh, I think if you properly lay out your eating cycles, you should be fine. Hopefully that helps. Hopefully the normal folks out there got a little bit of advice, and hopefully our, uh, our audience member there who recently had bariatric surgery and is well on the way to dominating the world uh, by taking on marathons, which is awesome. Um, hopefully you've got a little bit more insight as well. This is Coach Patrick from MarathonNation.us signing off. I'll see you guys online or at the races.